Well, we are back, and if you're still there, there's been some kind of, well, shortage on the receptivity. Uh, I'm just going to wait a second to see if, in fact, this is live. I'm so sorry there, but I can't apologize for electricity. But it seems that we're back. Okay, cool. Uh, a momentary lapse in the electricity. So let me just start over again. Just start right over. Uh, today, May 29th, 2021. Alan Clement here from Santa Monica, California. Um, a series of talks. I had just been cut off, but I'll just jump right back in. Today is Memorial Day weekend. And I think many of you know that my mom and dad, both veterans of World War II, my grandfather, a Marine in World War I, grew up on military bases. Most of my friends as a young teenager were, were Marines, older Marines. I mean, it's, I grew up in that era. Equal, when my parents moved to Virginia from Boston and Maine, I was saying that my best friend, Joey Bratton, he and I were best buddies, and in high school, he was one of the first people in our area, in our city, to have been incarcerated for, for marijuana. And he was given a year-long prison sentence in Richmond State Penitentiary. And so today's talk and theme is about living in this world with venerating complexities. It's one thing to be alive and deal with shadow and struggles and psychological complexities, but there are forces, diabolical forces, people who do not delight in empathy and compassion and mutuality and freedom and democracy. There are people who are without conscience, people who delight, perversely take joy in creating problems and harm and horror for other people. We know that. Human minds without conscience. And here it is on Memorial Day weekend, which should be Memorial Day year. And, you know, my God, who could ever imagine what it means to pay tribute to the 2.5 million people in Tibet who were mercilessly persecuted, killed, raped, and annihilated by the, the, Chinese, the Chinese marauding totalitarian Mei Zongtong goes throughout history, the boys and girls in Hong Kong being imprisoned and their families in Burma and the people being tortured as we speak. We live in a world of wars, massacres. And it's, it's one thing to meditate. And I just so delight in the poetry and the intimacy of a nuanced sense of inner and outer being in the tantrification of poetry. You know, I just begging myself to find my life post LA into a tropical environment where I can just play in the splendor of a kind of sonic intimate moment of healing, healing. But we live in a world where there are other forces at play. And I wish I could go on and on about this, but I'll try to be succinct and at the same time try to be personal. Daring to resist. And Joe was arrested and put in prison and I had to learn, uh, I got my credentials, so to speak, within the the Christian community in Virginia, to be a young preacher, an upholder of God, Christ, and Jesus. And those were the ones that were allowed in prison to visit inmates on a more regular basis. They kind of took pride in having someone who represented the, the Christian faith come rather than just a friend of the family. And so I undertook that process and got my little cert certification so I can see my best friend. Point being is he was a beautiful mind and he would explain to me, he says, Alan, you cannot believe what life is like behind these walls, these bars. We'd smoke and dance and play and all of a sudden I'm in prison here and they wanted to beat you, rape you, kill you, poison you, persecute you, denigrate you. There's no moment, no hour that's safe here from the violence of what goes down. And this perfectly beautiful, humble, caring, lovely mind man, best friend, 
had to learn to resist. He had to dare to toughen up. And it was like a radical lesson for me. I was like in the, you know, from the 60s and the early 70s, we were dancing to music and Led Zeppelin and, 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 and Jimi Hendrix and The Who and The Cream and all the various things that we did at that time with low dosing, medium dosing, smoking, hashish, surfing, walking, making love, poetry, lying under the sun, examining the stars, imagining freedom inside and outside and an end to the Vietnam War. And I would go up and visit my friend. He'd be beaten to a pulp, blackened eyes. And yet he, he learned to resist. He had to learn boxing and fighting and what it meant to get outrageous. It was such a contrast to my life. Well, he was eventually brutally murdered. It left a radical heart scar in my own soul. And it's still there all these decades later. Jump time. I was reading in the paper today a young woman, Faye Shulman. Faye Shulman. And I don't know a lot about her, but I was mesmerized. She died a few days ago at 101 at her home in Toronto. Jewish survivor. And she apparently, as the legacy is told. Could it have been in August of 1941 in a village in Poland when the invading German soldiers invaded this area? They took in the village something like close to 1850 uh, Jews and systematically assassinated them in, in, in mowed them down in ditches. Now, prior to that horror, that horror of that massacre, just barely a footnote to the 20 million killed, diseased, persecuted, exterminated in World War II, they were interrogated apparently and from the nearly 2,000 members of the community, they, they kept 27 people who could be useful to the Third Reich German soldiers. Uh, seamstresses, uh, dressmakers, um, a number of other basic crafts equal to this, this young woman, um, Faye Schulman, who was just a teenager, a fledgling photographer. They saw value in not murdering her. And so these these so-called chosen ones that weren't massacred then commingled with their oppressors and eventually became uh, tragically assimilated in forcibly working for the 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 psychopathic soldiers in Poland at this time and Young Fay was to photograph special events within the the German ranks. I mean, and so what she chose to do was to photograph the atrocities and equal to doing that which she was forced to do, which was to photograph the celebratory moments of the soldiers with their mistresses, uh, often killing Jews, massacring them. It's unthinkable. She chose to, to keep photographs. I mean, imagine that being with psychopaths like that and hiding 
images that would clearly indicate your resistance to the the horror of this this these men and women without conscience and from this as a young teenager she branched out managed to escape with some of the other 27 that were so-called spared from the massacre and they took up armed resistance i don't know i don't have the words i'm a person of words i don't have the words to describe the emotionality required to to stand in that level of conscience and integrity is there a word for something deeper than courage the radicalization of the rightness to resist and they lived in forests in the winter in swamps being hunted and chased but equally with guns and munitions and living under the stars and living in the trees and eating whatever you could eat resisted the soldiers resisted the psychopaths i mean that is so over the top rad and, and this weekend memorial day weekend we we are honoring these women and men who have done that it, it's so easy to just for me i don't know about you but to neglect or or somehow set aside the cry the scream the blood the horror the amputations the rapes the murder the ditches filled with bones and the sinews of freedom and just carry on to my next healing environment will it be maui will it be bali who will love me who can i make love with will i survive did anthony fauci is the whole pandemic and the murder of life all on his soldiers i mean what really matters here and i just want to take a moment to cry and to weep and to cathart and to be outraged yes if you want to tune in stay tuned in and let us do something here in this brief sharing to honor to bring into deep emotional integrity the history of freedom the history of resistance the history of of national ethnic and global patriotism those women and men who have fought the good fight and what can we do to embody that same daring energy to not go down lightly but to stand up brightly and to live in the honor knowingly that our lives as much as humanly possible are dedicated to the theology to the psychology to the to the transpoliticalization of freedom the universality of of decency of empathy of compassion of kindness i mean i have to just keep bringing up my dear friends in burma do ong san suu kyi i'm reading articles that are written by pigs denigrating her denigrating from the outside not knowing what's going down in that country the horrors of those kind of complex decisions to to resist you know we have this this woman fei shulman who resisted with her with her camera and resisted with a rifle shot men right through the the head right through the heart right through in the eyes
I mean, we live in a world where that is required. Where we have to participate in this sicko, psycho dance of love and war, right and wrong. These, I mean, how close in can we get to feel the anguish, the tears? Well, Faye, she lived to 101, it said, just died. I didn't even know about this woman and so many others like her. But what she did, it said, is that she took the diabolical popular myth that the Jews went to their death like sheep without resistance. She obliterated that nonsense. And she spoke up and documented with her photography the resistance movement. I mean, there's something so rad about, let's just pause for a minute. Oh, Faye Shulman, the courage that you have, woman, to have put your camera, risked your life as a 17-year-old like you were doing in the deep frozen forests of Poland with the psychopaths trying to rape and kill and taking images of those multiple bodies in trenches and taking images of your fellow and sister resistance fighters. I mean, I can't even imagine my 14 and a half year old daughter having or choosing dad. I'm taking up the dare to resist. It's forced upon us. Poland is America. Poland 41 is Canada. What happened in Tiananmen Square is going to happen in Milwaukee. What's gone down in Rangoon and Mandalay and so many other cities in Myanmar is happening in Santa Monica, in Venice, in Milwaukee, in Manhattan, in Sydney, in Byron Bay. Imagine boys and girls at the Waldorf schools learning to take up, not Christ, but take up the gun, the grenade. Where are we headed here? I can hear totalitarianism's march. I am the lucky ones at this stage. And I'm going like, whoa, 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 whoa. So thank you, Faye Schulman, for keeping alive this, this meme of daring to resist. And thank you, Joe, my dearest best friend, for showing me at an early stage. Here I am telling the story for the first time. How many years later? Daring to resist. You dared to rise up into the complexity of the complexity of the gulag based upon the injustice of going to prison because you smoke marijuana? Because you're a young woman in Poland who's celebrating art and photography and therefore you need to be raped? What are we as a species? Yes, insert the Buddha here. Oh, nuns and monks and lay people all throughout time immemorial, have you not understood deeply enough all the oceans filled with the blood and the tears of your own mind and heart from having been beheaded, having fought the good fight, having dared to resist but died. It all roots back into consciousness. Nama, Rupa, those two fundamental em enemies, excuse me, those two fundamental elements of beingness, it all originates within the mind. Mind created by oneself alone as one freed and by oneself alone as one defiled. And these, these culprits of decency, greed, anger, and delusion. That's why I think I'm so obsessed with wanting to root out the Nibbana desire, the Arhant desire. Do you feel it? Ever more in my life, as I get closer and closer to my own death, the convulsion of the world closing in, my friend's Richmond penitentiary is all, is it going to be the world? 
for Hong Kong now, the prison camps in mainland China. And <laughs> let me pause and say this. You know, I was thinking of another story. Way back in 86, could it have been in 85? I'm not sure. I traveled throughout Burma as a layman. I got back into the country post-monasticism and decided to travel by myself to all these places that I never went to. And I could speak the language fairly well at that time. I traveled to the north, to the south, to the east. I walked, I took rickshaws, I took trains. I did everything I possibly could to be a Burman, to be a resident of the country, not an American. And I went to Pagan, the incredible ancient capital. Many of you have probably been there. This is long before tourism had really taken off. And this ancient capital, really only a few thousand people living there. And as far as the eye could see were these ancient temples from the 10th, 11th, and 12th century that people from all over the country supported in building. And there, it's, it's amazing. I, I took a group of, of Westerners there this last trip of mine in 2020. It's spectacular and heartbreaking. And I hired a young fellow in an ox cart. And it was a dusty, deep, summery day there where the dust just lingers in the air for hours and hours. No rain there during the dry season. And we were speaking in Burmese and chugging along under the sun, going from one temple. And he spoke fluent English. And between Burmese and English, we began to interrelate. And you know how it is when you meet someone that's super special, where time and circumstance recede. The type of Ubuntu, the communion, the natural elegance of shared intimacy, where you are delighting in why, why we're alive. And he's explaining the history of Bagan and the temples, and we would get off the ox cart and go into these temples. And those of you who've been there, you know they're, they're so old and sacred. And you can hear your heartbeat sometimes. The silence is so beautiful. He's explaining nuance to me and showing me things that you couldn't even see. But he would talk about the history of it, the attributes of the Bodhisattva. And I asked him, what does Bodhisattva mean to you? And he would be almost as if he was an eloquent monk. And he had been a young novice monk a number of times in his earlier years. He must have been 16 or 17 years old. I'm not sure exactly at this point. But we were delighting in each other's company. He had explained Pagan, the temples. He talked to me about Ananda, the Buddha's cousin who was a long-term attendant, Theraputta, Mahamogalana, Visaka, Vimala. And it was, I have to say, it brings me delight, quite different than my beloved friend Joey meeting him in the prison in Richmond, Virginia, where he's having to, to learn to dare to resist. My young friend in Bagan is, is showing me the ethical elegance of relaxed presence and sharing these deep embedded sonic hymns that he's learned throughout his life of the historical insights into his hometown of Pagan in, in Burma, one of the wonders of the world. We spent hours out there. We, we were covered, as you know, with sweat and dust and, and dirt. I was super happy. We were in this incredible state of joy. I learned so much about the, the mind of, 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 of the ethnic groups. He was very conversant 
in, in those who lived in Chin State, in Karin State, Shan State, Rakhine State. I learned a lot about Burmese history and about Dhamma and about human relationships and about the language and about intimacy in that shared space. It was a beautiful moment and it brings me joy now to even recall it. At the end, I had a little inexpensive camera and I said, can I remember this day and take a photograph of us? And I did. And I asked, is there a way that I can get your address from you and that when I return to America uh, and I have these developed, may I send it to you in memory of our experience? And he said, no, no there's no need to do that. No. The, in a way, he communicated to me the memory of who we are, what we've done, is, is sufficiently in my own heart. And I felt a little bit, oh, I wish you could remember it in the way that I would like you to remember it, in a physical portrait. Of. And he, I don't know where he came up with the desire, but he said, would you mind coming back to my home in the village? I'd like to introduce you to my my mother and father and we went and it was just a, a very ordinary wooden thatched hut which was super delightful I just just even you know just, it's truly heartbreaking to to feel what's happening to the people of Myanmar right now the horror of what's going on. The sanctity of that culture and that country, it just, the, the wars, the Jews, the Dachau's, the Vietnam's. How many tears do we have to shed to stop the horror of violence? What will stop it? What will stop it? Can the whole world just weep and celebrate a trans-biblical Christ that's just the luminosity of love and it just completely evaporates in an instant like the light does the dark? That collective delusion that wants to harm life and self? Call me an existential dreamer. But daring to resist is so fucking crucial for us to survive. We're forced. Kids are forced. Young Faye Shulman, she's a young girl, had to take up guns and shoot fucking soldiers right through their eyes. Meanwhile, documenting the evidence of of Russians and Jews who said, no, we're going to resist and live in frozen snowbanks. Anyway, so we went back to this fellow's home, brought out tea and introduced his mom and dad. And, and I asked him one more time if I could take a picture of him, my persistent Americanism, and send it to him. And he says, no, 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 please, please don't. And then he said, but come. And he took me into his little room, just off the living room there, and on his walls, on the walls of his walls, <laughs> were all these photographs of himself. I don't know how many there were, but there were a lot. He said, over the years, he explained to me, over the years that I've been a tour guide here in Bagan, 
with tourists coming through like yourself, friends of the country. I've collected images that were sent to me and now you understand why I don't want one more. And he made the comment, this is my interpretation, he made the comment, he says, in each of these images, I put them on the wall, so it reminds me of, of a different face of myself, the recreation of my life through the evolutional development, if you will. It reminds me of the wisdom of a Nietzsche and the wisdom of, of the development of Dhamma. I see my evolutional growth image by image. So many ways in which I can interpret that at the moment. The one that comes closest to my heart That was in 86, 96, 2006, 2016, 35 years ago. I wonder on the walls of Pagan today, what would we see with life in Burma today to show us the face of the boy and the girl, show us the face of the civil disobedience movement Look at how rapidly the world has changed from our beloved Faye Shulman to the beloved tour guide in Pagan to May on Memorial Day. Think of all the faces of existence, all the faces of war, all the faces of persecution. I don't know any of them. My beloved sacred land of Burma, gripped by a psychopathic mind, a mind that's delighting in creating harm and violence and oppression for other people. And today the scenery is having to integrate those forms of insight and so quickly a country is on the cusp of going into the memory hole of freedom. An entire country. Bagan is sacred. The country of Burma is sacred. The globe is sacred. And here on Memorial Day, I wonder when people are talking Chests are being pounded. A global totalitarianism. A slavery of the human race. A desecration of non-humans. The ongoing obliteration of nature. Boys and girls as young as 8, 9, 10, 12, 16 are screaming out. The United Nations is no longer in New York. It's in every human heart around the world. We are on the cusp of the sixth mass extinction. And what will you do to rise up just like Faye Shulman and dare to resist? I, I, I say this sharing today quite spontaneously so I go right between, this is very personal. I woke up today very, very heavy hearted. I don't know why, but I, I just feel like there's a part of me that's just sinking. Just finding very little reason to want to continue living. It's not from the despair of a diagnosis alone. It's those of you who know me, those of you who've read Extinction X-Rated, those of you who've attended my retreats, especially the retreat last year at Ian and Terry's in Ubud that we offered on Donna to all people who wanted to come because of 
the generosity of of Ian and Terry. Someone recently reminded you you communicated over that week to the what the 50, 60, 70 people that were there, how you had exhausted your life force, that you had done what you had to do. You were now transitioning to this next dimension called Tusita, where you wanted to be in resonant awakening with what you called your samsaric sangha. I wrote about it for nearly a year in this book, and I'm going like, and now the rise of a global totalitarianism, the exposure of our Dr. Prophet Anthony Fauci being seen as unthinkably sociopathic, funding and complicit with gain of function, the lethality of the COVID virus in a Wuhan bio lab. This man has been the appointed prophet of guiding the pandemic in America and around the world and is being seen as profiting with big pharma, funding the lethality of a bioweapon that likely leaked, if not, who knows, consciously released, but purposefully spread around the world in flights out of China knowingly while Xi Jinping locked down Wuhan. And this is America on Memorial Day. We have a bona fide psychopath parading around as a medical saint embodying compassion? Are we who, what, where? I am like this, this Faye Shulman. You're like Faye Shulman. It's like, what do we do here? Where do we finally start resisting not just the lies and fighting back and taking our home and our country, our conscience, our dignity. I mean, I can't imagine what it meant for this young woman at 15 years old in Poland to be ripped out of her home and her family and to be witness to the massacre of 95% of her village being machine gunned in front of her eyes, multiplied times millions in World War II, millions more World War I, unlimited mass massacres and wars on every continent all throughout history. I can't even imagine what an Aboriginal or First Nations or a Native American, the indigenous people of America, Canada, Australia, Europe, South America, Africa, India, South Asia, China, the, the pre-indigenous cultures, the ongoing massacre, desecration, how many Fay Shulmans, how many Burmas, how many Tiananmen Squares, right? Could we scream enough so that daring to resist is the call of the heart today that our dharma, our yoga, our asana, our meditation, our mindful intelligence requires to stand not just in solidarity with an entire country in Burma. Where are you, right? The frustration I feel. I just feel like I want to escape this, this cacophony of bad music. It's not music, this cacophony, this smell, this odorous, aberrant energy of horror, violence. I don't know why human minds, why minds at all are born without conscience, that develop without conscience. How is it that a mind delights in harming, creating problems? I am stumbling over my own fear and my own trouble, troubled heart. I wish, I wish I knew, I wish I had, I, here I want to 
kind of come closer to the end here. I'm, I'm on a personal basis, you know, there's nothing else to share. I'm really struggling personally with, with, with why stay alive. I think I need to, I must leave where I am soon to just simply change context. I must come out of isolation. I must find my resistance fighters, even just a few. I know they're out there digitally, but I don't know you. I don't want to pretend that we're close and intimate. Yes, I appreciate, but I'm not into followers, likes, views, swipe. It's just not my thing. I want real contact at this point. And I want it on a basis of real. I want to know what to do with this coming few months. I want to know what to do, not just with this this background desire to heal a so-called aneurysm, to employ the miracle. Yes, that's there, but what is, what is purposeful behavior right now in relationship to the national and the global pandemic of, of, of persecution? Where are the forces of darkness? Who are the ones that are trying to denigrate our Christ, our God, our nuministic love of the holy. I want to come out of my own suburb, my own cul-de-sac, my own trailer court. No offense, I grew up in a trailer. I want to come out of my nationality. I want to, I want to grow into my resistance fighter again, my existential rebel. I ended my book with the empowerment of the one theme that kept me alive was the existential rebel in me. My beloved friend who passed on, Robert Chardoff, and his beloved wife, Jenny Chardoff, whom I was blessed to marry back in 1990. Many of you know, I've spoken about him. I'm soon to be leaving here, their home. The producer of many movies, one such movie was the Rocky movie, and I, I, channeled as best as I could as, as, as guiding savior throughout the writing of this book, I kept asking, yes, Bob, be in dialogue with me. Talk to me about these edges I'm going through. And he kept supporting. There's no obstacle too large psychologically or physically that you cannot challenge, Alan, even going as far as, for me, putting into one of the chapters, owning your outrage. And it, never giving up. And I, Faye, daring to resist, never giving up. is a part of me, like my dad and my mom, they never gave up. And, it's not long before all of us, for me especially, gone. Just, you know, it's only a minute or two before, even if we only live to 100 years, is it gone. A year, gone. What's remembered here on Memorial Day weekend? Taking up the good fight. Yesterday, I playfully imagined being invited into a special gathering of sociopaths, psychopaths, the dictators of the world and their, their wives and husbands in the capital of Burma, Naypyidaw. And I imagine creating a moment where I smuggled myself in to document the evidence to be kind of an underground CIA Mossad agent where I could be in the vicinity of the, the pathogen of collective evil. All the women and men who represent totalitarianism, 
fascism, dictatorship, denigration, all the, the forces that have led throughout history to the violation of the woman, the violation of the womb, the violation of breasts, the violation of the human heart, the violation of the safety of life, the desecration of nature, the desecration of life. All of them were collectively in that room. And I found myself as an underground subversive, identical to that man, I don't remember his name at the moment, who smuggled himself into a meeting with Adolf Hitler and attempted to assassinate him, missed the mark. What a different world it would have been, huh? And I imagined being in that mansion in Naypyidaw. This is daring to resist as a last radical act. And it's theatrical. I'm going to write about it if I live long enough in this next volume, in this trilogy. It's called Rebirth. Rebirthing into life before death the, the, the deep daring to scream, if you will, with the highest, most creative, sonic, vibratory energy that just chills out of the genome of the other, that deep toxicity called pathology, called a mind without conscience being replaced with the radiance of ethical wisdom. That's, I mean, we've got to, right? We've got to do everything we can to mimic artificial intelligence through organic intelligence, through meditative sonic vibrational frequency awareness, through the Abhinya supranormal deep development of knowledge that's so powerful that our metta, our panya, our liberty, our vimuti, our freedom, our infused compassion is so powerful rather than using the gun to massacre or to annihilate your demonic projection. That's what, the, that's what happened. Let's, let's mow them down, our demonic projections, not being responsible for our own delusion. We've got to learn, right? Rise up with me here. We've got to learn the, the sonic intelligence required to look into the eyes of other who are still possessed, ourselves included, and gone, vanquished in the moment through our capacity, just like my tour guide in Bagan in 1986 and I communed in Ubuntu, a heightened Ubuntu, the erotification of Ubuntu, the vimutification of Ubuntu, the liberation of Ubuntu, so that when we meet someone who's still possessed, ah, just like we would physically make love, we sonically engage and it's gone. We must evolutionally come to that edge, right? Soon, 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 soon. So I'm in that mansion in Naypyidaw. I'm using imagination, inviting you to imagine with me. And there's Ming online. 5,000 people in insane prison, Mandalay prison, right now suffering, being brutally tortured, interrogated, and raped, all because they dream all because they showed you and me the temple of freedom, democracy. Fei, Fei, dead. 20 million people in World War II here on Memorial Day weekend, exterminated. Millions, hundreds of millions before. When will we ever come to an end? Daring to resist right on, right? But daring to
do everything that we can to study the sonic vibratory energy of the human psyche and the subconscious and the substratum so sufficiently that we embody the holiness of vibratory liberty and have the courage to resist so strongly in our compassion, I will not let you escape the power of love and freedom from fear, sociopath. I'm going to force feed you through sonic shared space, the transformational, transmolecular, psychedelic meditative awakening of liberation from delusion, pathology, and fear. We've got to come close to that very, very soon, or there will be no thing to resist. There'll be no earth to save. We're already seemingly over many people over the cliff. And how many more times will there be earth born populations that grow, wars and memorials, and 100-year lives of Faye Shulman. Who? How many tens of thousands of other Jewish women and girls that resisted something about the people of Burma, the Chin, the Kachin, the Shan, the Kayan, the Rakhinese, the unity government, the young boys and girls leaving the universities and schools and the teachers and doctors, taking up arms. So rad. Just like Faye Shulman and those bands in the jungles and the snows, she documented them in, in a book, The Resistance. Women and resistance. Who are they here on Memorial Day? It's my way of finding a reason to live. To go on, not to just go quietly. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Dad. Thank you for all the the patriots of the world, of America, of Canada, Australia. Thank you, thank you, thank you for fighting the good fight. Thank you for the freedoms that I enjoy today based upon fighting the good fight. I want to be a dreamer. I want to be an idealist. But I don't want to, I don't want to go quietly. And Right now, I can feel it. I can sense it. I can smell it. The lies are so palpable. It's so despicable, the lies of this fucking American government. It's so crazy, the toxicity of white power, privilege, and supremacy, and profit, and money, and bullshit. Where is the new? Martin Luther King, where are the new Gandhis? Where are the new Rosa Parks? Where are the new boys and girls? We don't even know their name in Tiananmen, in Hong Kong, in Burma. Da Aung San Suu Kyi, U Win Tin, U Win Mint, the 5,000 others persecuted and being raped and tortured in the gulags of Burma. You are not alone. We hear you. Joe Bratton, your life was not in vain. You learned to fight the persecution the denigration of a culture that could not understand the liberty inherent in what we were doing then as teenagers. There was nothing criminal about the marijuana. There was nothing criminal about the lysergic acid molecule. There's nothing criminal about our peace-loving music. We must resist at the same time. I'm, I'm craving here taking resistance higher. There's no doubt if I were in Burma right now, I would be in the hinterlands with one ethnic group or another learning the fine art of guerrilla war. I am not a pacifist. I am not a nonviolent activist. I do all that I possibly can to imagine that. But I'd be right there with Faye.
Oh, Ming Online, Xi Jinping, Putin. I, can, I wish I could name the other 1,000 men and women in the world most responsible for propagating national and religious and global totalitarianism. You, top 1,000 evil doers. I would love to infiltrate your banquet of evil here on Memorial Day. I would, I would honor the true patriots in the world by doing all that I could to infiltrate. And quite frankly, I'm in that room with you, girls and boys. I have an opportunity. On the one hand, I've got enough to do what's required to take out every one of you by simply just opening this jar and letting the toxic, invisible fumes consume you and consume me. Who would say no if I were able to do that? And just in an instant, the top 1,000 evildoers are gone in their celebration of drinking the blood of freedom lovers, a satanic global cult. Am I a conspiratorial idiot by even thinking this way? Who could bring them all together like that in a kind of anti-Burning Man celebration of the epic evil genome perpetrators of violence through guns and nukes and war and desecration who delight in a young girl being raped because she stood up and resisted the evil of dictatorship through nonviolent celebration, chanting the ancient Buddhist discourse on metta, may all beings be free of fear. Yeah, raping her to death slitting her throat, calling her parents to come get her body, to send a message to the other freedom lovers in culture. I would chain them all into chairs. This is what I would do. And they would be struggling. How did we get st stuck in these invisible chains? And they. I've got psychic power. This is my Sermon on the Mount to change the world. This is my Abhinya moment. This is my Tusita. This is my Tuvataka Sutta. Hey, you boys and girls, look what you've done. Let's just bring all those screams and cries and evil voices and struggles that you've created in the horrors of people. Let's put them all on the walls around us. Let us see what you've done through your desire to create profit, wealth, and the denial of the sanctity of life. Look at all the horrors that you've created. And I want you to be naked. I want to take all your clothes off and all your clothes are turned over here and they're put into a big pile. We'll burn them later, but you're all naked now. And there's no chains on your chairs. They're soft cushions. And you're having to witness in this holographic cinema a Netflix special of the evils done by evildoers called you collectively. The banquet of Satan. I've infiltrated, you've infiltrated. I'm not going to take your life. I'm not going to perpetuate what you do to others. I'm going to feed your conscience with a clockwork orange cinema. Keep your eyes wide open in compassion and here in your mind, I introduce the DMT, the ayahuasca, the psychedelic, the satipatthana, the parami, the hiri and otapa molecule, the deep regret of evil doing, the deep fear that I've done wrong, an act of conscience molecule. Imagine the act of conscience 
in this collective group of a thousand people beginning to be accountable to the horrors that they've created in Myanmar, in China, in Hong Kong, in the world, all throughout history. I'm not ready to forgive you. I'm only here to serve you and me and the future of life to be removing from this collective genome the Hitler-esque delusional psychopathology of evil. I don't want to have another Memorial Day celebration, commemoration. I'd like to remove from the earthly plane of existence, right? The proclivity to denigrate, rape, and violate here on Memorial Day. This is my theatrical act of creative activism, bringing into that Napidaw theater of evil, naked men and women, ingesting the transformational molecule of the awakening of conscience. And you can imagine, you and I now are all around them, as we would be in an ancient sacred ceremony, as caretakers of people purging their traumas. Imagine in that room right now, boy, I'd ever like to have a 10 camera shoot for Netflix special of the purging of the collective totalitarian evil on the planet. And we begin to see them weep and scream out in their respective languages, the sorrows, the horrors, the accountability to what they've done, what they're doing. Wouldn't that be an epic moment to show honor to all the boys and girls throughout history that we have made good on the promise of your sacrifices, your choices, by this is what we're going to do as nonviolent activists, bearing witness through active engagement of compassion and action to liberate from the genome of those totalitarian running dogs of Satan, the removal of horror, anger, denigration, and the perversity of delighting in rape. Enough delight in perversity, right? Who's with me? Who's going to be the guerrilla war warriors to infiltrate the totalitarian party of evil? I'm there, you're there. I'm not going to read them a passage from the Buddha. I want to see accountability through genuine tears. These are the people that need to do the meditative ayahuasca, DMT. These are the people that need to heal from the psychedelic. We need to come out of the need to commemorate only the patriots who've died and address these evildoers who want to dominate the planet of Earth with the fourth right called totalitarianism through profit, Wall Street, Silicon Valley, enough cursing the darkness. Let's get creative. Learn to take our Dharma into more sonic, vibratory levels of frequency and blow the evil out of evildoers' minds. I want to be a CIA agent for God, a Mossad assassination zealot for freedom. And I want those tears to be genuine. Imagine taping these men and women screaming out as their wives and daughters and sons are being sodomized by the devil, him or herself, in front of their eyes through an artificially, holographically created image of falsity made real through the delusion of their own stupidity. They see that which they do being done to their very own family and kin. Eyes wide open, clamped wide with compassion grips, purging the desecration of their own satanic allegiance to pathology from their own wretched evil souls. Yes, Netflix, you can have this special for free. Imagination on the stage set of liberty, making good on Memorial Day, 
my promise to Jesus, my promise to Christ, my ascension and my promise to God. I am sick of violence. I am sick of war. I am sick of crying out at the stupidity of fucking men and women who desecrate and rape. My country of Myanmar is in tears right now, fighting desperately for the salvation of freedom. And the world writes bullshit articles about this and that. Why aren't we standing in solidarity, rising high in the power with Do Aung San Suu Kyi, the elected civilian leaders? the boys and girls behind the gulag. Stop the politics. Let's rise up and support these iconic expressions of democracy and freedom in action before China, before Russia, before America, before the, 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 the running dogs of evil around the world in white suits, with white skin, many of them, with money and profit and stock options, before they dominate all of us. And we're in the gulags. And get out of that, that, that notion that we cannot make a difference. Today, I close with the theme, daring to resist, using our imagination, using the adventure of cognitive powers. Yes, I'm going to write a book about this called Rebirth. And yes, I will use everything that I'm saying today to heighten the vibratory frequency of a cognitive possibility of removing the evil from another person's mind of Ubuntu is really true. The bodhisattvic concept is really a sonic vibrational transformational wisdom is really true. Then we must learn how to strengthen, right? Compassion and wisdom and freedom in action so that we have the power to psychically look as superwomen, supermen, and look into the eyes of evil and say, you cannot destroy me with your gun, with your penis, your toxic horror. I am transparent freedom in action, and I am here to, to alleviate from you all of your toxicity, all of your pathology. That is our Faye Shulman. That is freedom in feminine dynamic action. And so from my heart to yours, let us use our creativity, our satire, our comedy, our gallows humor, our radical activism. Let's blow the minds off the roof of our apartments and homes. Let's not lie down on the tracks enough. Let's take up guerrilla, psychic, dharmic, warfare tactics and creatively create circumstances that humiliate, shame, the denial out of the minds of the leaders. Saturday Night Live in the most sonic, intense form of radical expression. If you don't believe that I'm capable of saying this and going public with it, I am doing it right now. And the book that I just completed, Extinction X-Rated, if you have the daring to embark upon that journey, is more radical than what I've said today. Get it. Hate me if you need to. Love me if you want to save your life and the freedom of the world. But I am joining the fight, and I pray that I have the courage to hear my own words, to live another day, because I am struggling very, very much so. Very, very, very much so from descending into some form of recognizable existential despair. There's a part of me that feels like I'm done. I'm older now. It's time for others to step up. I can use my words, but I feel that my, my energy is somewhat frail. The life force doesn't feel like it's elevating. It feels like it's receding. I dare say that with honesty because I love the ones I love and I want to love the ones I don't know yet to love. And I do want to pursue the future of human life. But I really need a reason to believe right now and I'm struggling very, very hard for that. So from my heart to yours, thank you.